hello, my name is Jeremy Martini, President of Verizon College and Seminary, and uh, we are here in the second of uh, several videos that we're doing in response initially to the uh, 215 children found in Kamloops, but since that time, of course, more uh, there's been more children, more bodies discovered at different sites, and uh, and really wrestling through how do we respond to this this situation and. Uh, and in order to respond to that, we, we really wanted to reach out and be guided by uh, some people who, who know better how to, how to give a response to that as, a, as Christians and as Indigenous leaders. And so we've invited a couple of our alumni, um, Jimmy Thunder and Andrew Thunder, who are brothers, and really grateful to have both of you guys here with us. Uh, both of you have experience in this, you have education in this, you're both working in the Ministry of Reconciliation uh, between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. Uh, and so you're, you're eminently qualified to help, to help guide us uh, in this. So many of us just wondering, uh, how do we respond to this? And so, uh, Jimmy, we've introduced you in a previous video, but for those who who haven't, we encourage you to go back and, and watch that video, uh, Jimmy and Andrew, but uh, uh, both Jimmy and Andrew, uh, graduates of, of our college, went on from here. Both of you earned MBAs, so you have, a, you have that business sense as well. Uh, both of you working uh, with Indigenous groups and, and using your, your education in that way. So uh, Jimmy is a, is a business officer um, in that, uh, and uh, and founder of Reconciliation Thunder, uh, which is a nonprofit uh, organization that's focused on, on reconciliation between Indigenous and uh, non-Indigenous. Uh, Jimmy's also adjunct faculty here at, at Horizon, uh, where he's, he's helping to teach our, our students. Uh, so we're, we're hopefully going forward in, in future generations uh, with a little more awareness. So grateful for that. Andrew, um, also working in, with your business and uh, uh, acumen here, a director of corporate responsibility, um, um, where you where you work at really to bring uh, directive to initiatives with the TRC, the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission. You work up north as as well with a lot of indigenous groups. Uh, so both of you coming here with a commitment to seeing that you're both OG Cree. Um, and from Treaty 9, and uh, welcome, thank you. And the longer introduction you can get from the previous video, I encourage you to go back and, and look at that. But, uh, but really, you're helping us, uh, what, we're, what we're defining as sort of a third wave, we're looking at obviously all these different uh, findings and they, they bring about extremes on left and right, whatever that even means anymore. And, uh, uh, but really, we're, we're needing a third wave for those of us who are really saying, Look, I don't want to be extreme on these other ends. I just don't know what to do, uh, but I feel that we need to do something, and uh, and you're you're helping us uh, really to to forge that 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 third path. And in our last video, uh, we said one of the things we really need to do is be educated. Uh, we just need to know more. I I need to know more. That's why I, I didn't feel even adequate to to give a response. I need to know more. And we give a lot of different resources that are available, links are available on that previous video. But one of those resources that help us get educated is the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. Yeah, and they and the 94 calls to, to action. And, and we've been promoting the 94 calls in 94 days that have come out through Reconciliation Thunder uh, in partnership with Circles for Reconciliation. Um, so we've been sending those out, promoting those, but uh, can you just walk us through what what are, is the Truth and Reconciliation Commission? Ninety four calls to action. What is this? Yeah, absolutely. So so this is the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's ninety four calls to action. They're ninety four calls. Um, so it's important to know well where did these come from, and so we have to start back with the residential schools. And so they were in, they were in place in Canada up until 1996. That's when the last one closed. Now, all the residential school survivors, they all got together and they realized like, you know, there were some really significant injustices that took place. And uh, without getting into all of it, it's uh, they realized that there needs to be something done in order to set this right. 
And so they uh, got together, organized themselves into a class action lawsuit against the Canadian government for the operation of the residential schools. It was actually the largest class action lawsuit in Canadian history. And, you know, they, they got together and they won. And so as part of the settlement, the, um, the Prime Minister of Canada gave an apology. And so, you know, that's where, that's the reason why the 2008 apology took place. Prime Minister Stephen Harper gave his apology as a result of um, Canada losing that class action lawsuit. Another thing that happened was that there was a settlement that took place for residential school survivors. A third thing that took place is Canada um, sort of paid the cost of a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It's really important to note that it would, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is not a government entity. It's government funded as a result of the class action lawsuit, but it's separate. And so it was chaired by Murray Sinclair and the commissioners traveled all throughout Canada, collecting the stories of residential school survivors from coast to coast to coast. So there was a huge amount of research that went into this and hours and hours of collecting and hearing the stories firsthand of those who had actually went through residential school survivors. And the stories that they have heard were completely horrific. And, and up until that point, the majority of Canadians just did not know what was actually happening in these residential schools. And so after they were done, they also looked into other documents. So the Aboriginal Justice Inquiry, the Royal Commission Report on Aboriginal Peoples, they looked at all the work that had been done up until that point. And they, they gave us a final report. And after they gave us the final report, they said, okay, well, let's 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 uh, give them an, an executive summary because the the report itself is over 4000 pages so they wanted to they wanted to give a summary of it so that it was a little bit more accept, accessible to the canadian public and so then they had the executive summary and even then in order to enhance the public's participation they summarized it even further into 94 different things that that people could do and that, that's where these 94 calls to action come from. In our last video. Just to, so just to get this clear. So the 94 calls to action is effectively the summary of the, the summary. These are the, the main points of the summary of the much larger document. Yeah. This is our distilled version, the focus point. So this is. Yes, yes, that's exactly. A sized piece, yeah. Okay. It's yeah. It's and it's it's really distilled down in order to facilitate public engagement. Because if you think about the millions of Canadians that we have, are all the millions going to read this report? You know, right. like it'd be great, but they probably won't. You but know, it's, it's. I think it's valuable. So, as sort of as an educator, I guess, you know, for us to have in mind. So, you read these ninety-four. You're reading this bite-sized piece, and so people who read it and say, "What that doesn't make," or have some sort of strong reaction, probably should. Uh, take the time to look at the other deeper layers of what went oh. into that deep that point. So rather than just having a knee jerk reaction to it, we would be wise to actually investigate the 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 bigger picture that went into that because we're really just seeing a highlight. It's like kind of the the headline. You really got to read the article. Exactly. You have to yes. In order to understand these calls, you have to read the executive summary. And even better, read the full report. And and people are doing this, you know. People, people, people are doing this, and it's and it's making them better Canadians. It's making them better thinkers, and it's really improving their their how to do theology better, you know. Just having having that context, and so and so to give you an idea of the volume of work. So so this this is the ninety four calls to action in this little book. Uh, this is the executive summary right here, honoring the truth, reconciling for the future. You know, the, this is this is the executive. So you can see it's a it's a bit more of a read, but then there are multiple volumes. So this here, this is the um, this is part one of volume one, and it's it's on the history. And so you can see that this, uh, for just the first part of volume one, it, there's quite a bit that went into it. And, um, and then over here you have you have part two. So so these two together are our volume one of the final report of the TRC. And they're not all that thick, you know. Um, this is volume volume two, 
is the uh, Inuit and Northern Experience. Volume three is the Métis Experience, and and so on. Volume four is on missing and mur or the missing children and unmarked burials. And so it's it's really I would really recommend this, uh, especially now with all of these unmarked graves and unmarked burials that are being found. Um, even just reading that section, there there are about you know four about four other other sections of this report. Um, but okay. definitely Is that useful report published? for unpacking further. When was it published? These were all published in 2015. So in 2015, um, yeah, these were all available to the public. And uh, yeah, the, the challenge is that even, even from then, uh, the majority of Canadians, like given all of this work, the majority of Canadians have not even taken the time to, to read this, you know, these nine to four calls to action. Right. That's where we find ourselves today. Which is, I just, I just want to throw that out because I do know, you know, one of the things here is especially with the unmarked graves and things like that, but it's important to note that in, I mean, the unmarked graves um, was part of a report in 2015 before, before we're finding the bodies of children at residential schools, this is already like the bodies that are being found now are, are just sort of physical confirmations of something that has already been talked about um, well, for decades really, but, uh, but that was actually written down in print. Um, so this, is, this isn't news, these, these, these discoveries at the, at the residential schools, this is just sort of physical um, corroboration to some of the things that have already been said um, had already been reported on for, for a long time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, um, like we, we've, we in our feedback, we're, we're looking back at, at the emails that are coming in and just the comments that are being made online. And, and uh, yeah, and, and one of the comments was on related to the discoveries in terms of whether or not the 215 were actually, you know, residential school victims or the 715 that were found in Cowessis or the other ones. Um, and it takes years to, to determine whether or not, you know, like forensically, if that was actually true. But regardless, like we had, we had this in 2015. So we knew this was happening in 2015. We knew it was a problem since 2015. And even further, you know, this was, it was a public document in 2015. And so what's happening now, though, is that, is that Canadians are recognizing that this that was written in 2015 is something that, that we need to address. It's not new information. It's it's just new to some. Really important to the 94 calls to action is that uh, there are calls to action that are specifically targeted to individuals, institutions, which includes churches and, and the government itself, right? And so this is not just the people that were involved with the class action lawsuit. This is a, an invitation for all of Canadian society to get become a part of this, to make to become aware of the issues that are that exist within Canada and that have existed for many generations, and then specifically how to respond to them, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think another one, another one. We talked about we talked about the the Royal Commission report on Aboriginal peoples in in our last uh, in our last video, and uh, so this here, like this is this is just this is just a section. Of, of the RCAP. Now, with the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples, it gave us a 20 year plan in terms of how to make life better, you know, and how to how to really fix the relationship. So the, the difference this time is that that 20 year plan was targeted just towards the government. And what didn't happen is the investment, the financial investment, the Canadian will wasn't there because the Canadian public still didn't know, the Canadian public didn't read all of the RCAP. And, uh, and so, so really nothing happened in those 20 years. So the TRC knew that, and that's why, that's why instead of giving them this big report, we're giving Canada just this as, as the starting point. And that's the key thing. This is a starting point to right. help you get started, you know, and, and to generate public action and public education so that, so that this isn't left on the shelf, you know, that, so that this actually does happen and it actually does lead to change. So, so what are some of the things in the 94 calls? Like, give us a little bit of... 
Yeah. So I mean, it's broken. It's coming out every week, every every day, 94 calls a night for a day. So people who yeah. want to sign on to that through Reconciliation Thunder, um, you'll, you'll go through that over the next 94 days. We're on day, I don't know what day we're on now, whenever this video gets released, but but that's it. But just give us, yeah, just give us an overview. Yeah, absolutely. So, so first of all, um, it's broken down into a number of different ways. Uh, you know, there, there's two main sections. One, the first section is uh, is legacy, and the other other section is reconciliation. So, broadly speaking, there's two broad categories. Within that, there's there's 22 subsections, and these include things like child welfare, education, language and culture, health, justice. Um, you know, just to name a few. And so, and so when we think of these, like, again, it's people think that this is, these are calls for the government. There are a lot of calls for the government, but the thing is, even we cannot think that we, the calls for the government have nothing to do with us because you have to be informed to hold the government accountable to do these calls. Other things, you know, include, um, you know, there's, there's, there's really a section for every member of society, including um, these, these sections, section 71, 72, and 70. 73 uh and the further ones on missing children and burial information there we've had these calls to action since 2015 in terms of how to respond um there are also there are also sections for the church um you know there's church apologies and reconciliation um and education for reconciliation um so so there are calls in here for us specifically as christians in terms of what we can do and how we can advance reconciliation so as christians yeah so our, our audience primarily christian and the reason we're doing this is because there is that a lot of christians saying look we just want to know what what to do and this is saying look here's one of the things just at least become aware of some of the things that are put out there already that say this is these are some things to do so that's part of what we're doing here is just basically providing that that education but there is a you know our 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 audience primarily christian um and but also primarily um not necessarily um not necessarily the the christian denominations that that may be created residential schools and so uh, you know there is that sense in which people would say well look this is um, this isn't us. We didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't cause these, uh, these issues or whatever. Uh, we didn't, we didn't create these, these schools. Uh, that was different, different groups, but I guess from, so we're want to, we're going to want to go to kind of think, well, okay, so we, we, we see these 94 calls to action. Um, A, we want to know how does this kind of relate to us and our, and our, our Christian worldview? How does that um, how do how do we how do we bridge that gap? But um, but I think I just just to, to kind of initiate that conversation, I did want to read one one of the responses that we received, and then maybe uh, Andrew, you can help us and Jimmy um, think about how what does this mean for us as Christians to read these worldviews. But one of the one of the responses we got from a from a pastor um, um, from a, I think a Pentecostal church, so not not one of these churches, maybe necessarily directly responsible for creating um, creating these schools but nonetheless here's, here's a reality so says I you know I had the had the privilege of baptizing two First Nations ladies one of which had attended a residential school and it was powerful but she said this do you know how difficult it is to come to church when my family tells me why would you go to a Christian church? after all that they have, have done to us. And so sort of regardless where we are, what, what church affiliation we have, all this stuff had being done in the name of Christianity. So we, we, even if we can say, wow, we didn't directly cause this problem or whatever, we've inherited it. And as Canadians, we've inherited. And so um, the name of Christ is associated with it. And so we, we have this perception that that's a reality. And, and so we got it. We look at these 94 calls that tell us, that say, look, these are our voices that are saying, these are the things that this giant body of research has distilled down to these 94 calls saying, look, this is the things that need to happen. As Christians, what do we, how do we, 
how do we start to listen to these things and, mm -hmm. and bring that in with our worldview? Right. And I think that that is very essential to this whole discussion here is really understanding that the research that was done through the truth and reconciliation, the calls to action, um, everything related to, to the research and the, the new truths that have uh, surfaced from this, uh, we, and is, as well as the inf new information that's coming up about the physical evidence of unmarked graves. When we look at all of this, and um, the, the, especially the TRC, we need to understand that uh, these, this is a way, this is a method through which Christians can listen to the voices of Indigenous people, right? And uh, Christ himself exemplified how we are supposed to approach relationships. And uh, he's, he's shown us um, a template, a blueprint for reconciliation in the same way that he has reconciled us to himself, right? He's, uh, he, 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 he took on the form of a, a hu human being. He took on the form of, of a man who walked in our shoes. And he's, he's allowed himself to be able to um, experience exactly what we're experiencing. And he did that before the, the reconciliation process uh, itself, right? And so we need to understand that there are huge, um, uh, we have a responsibility as Christians to follow that same blueprint that Christ has given us, but also to recognize that there are implications for sharing the gospel message. Mm -hmm. From this, the, the comment that came in, right, that we have this indigenous minister who's saying, I've baptized these two indigenous uh, women, and uh, the response that she said that um, her family, she has this conflict because her entire family is saying, why are you going to church after all this harm that the church has caused you? Um, you know, and uh, regardless of whether or not, not that particular church was involved with any sort of, uh, of, of um, racist activities or, or oppression of the past, uh, there's, it still carries that weight. And so what we need to understand is that uh, as, as believers, we need to be aware of the barriers that exist uh, when we're preaching the gospel, right? And, and ensuring that um, as we are preaching the gospel, uh, that um, we are uh, ensuring that the gospel message is clear through our actions, because we're not just preaching the gospel through our words, but we're also uh, um, using our actions to 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 make the gospel known, right? And so, right now is a very critical time because uh, believers and non-believers, indigenous and non-indigenous people, are looking to the church right now and watching to see how the church is going to respond, how the church is responding to the TRC, to these discoveries, and how they are listening to indigenous voices and in, in, in engaging with indigenous peoples. And that's that's key, right? The listening piece, and 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 the the reality is, that, you know, it's it's our problem. This is a lot of these things were done in in the name of Christianity, and the average person, indigenous or otherwise, isn't parsing out and saying, "Oh, well, that group is a Baptist or Pentecostal or Cat." I mean, these things were done under the banner of of the name Christianity, and we can look back and say, yeah, they bad behavior is bad behavior and continues to be bad behavior, but uh, we need we need to repent on behalf of those who did things in our founder's name, Jesus's name, and say that was that was wrong. And, uh, and we would like to, to model something differently, but we can't just rush boldly ahead and pretend that these things didn't happen in those names, we need to that's a like you said, it's a barrier, and so, and so it's important. When that's part of what we want to do here, and I know in future videos we want to actually drill down a little bit into some specifics in the in the ninety four calls and the TRC uh, related to the church, and say you know get a little bit deeper into into what does that look like, and how do we how do we hold these together in tension with our our Christian identity. Um, and maybe we want to save some, we want, we, we want to, we want to leave enough people, you know, we want to get people to engage on that, in that. So maybe we want to save that for a future video, um, our next video. But um, um, yeah, so that's a good question. Do we, do we want to hear maybe we want to move into 
noting time here, maybe we want to just jump into, um, we've, we've introduced the 94 calls, we've introduced what they are. Um, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get into those a little bit deeper. We want to look at a little couple of the, the things that, uh, that uh, some of the feedback we have received so far. Um, and one relates to the 94 calls, and maybe you can speak to this uh, as well. Uh, one person wrote us and uh, so part of the 94 calls had to do with uh, with ch child welfare, right? And that's a major part of it. Uh, one of our one of our people, one of the people respondents is our daughter and husband adopted a two day old indigenous a baby as a private adoption. Um, um, and and the, the parents continually try to reinforce and honor uh, indigenous culture as part of how they're, they're raising them. So two non-Indigenous parents of Indigenous child. Um, and some Indigenous Christians have disapproved of this, of this adoption. Um, so what, what kind of, you know, do you have sort of an opinion for how I can do a good job of this? And what does that mean? And yeah, how does this relate even to the, some of these 90 work calls? Yeah. I think that uh, well, yeah, you're right. I mean, like we're we're at day uh, day five of uh, or we're our, we're 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 into the beginning. Uh, the the first of our calls to action, our 94 calls to action, are to do with child welfare. And so um, I think that yeah, just to as as a family, if you're if you're adopting or if you're fostering, like you know those sections, you know, and, and know what they mean, and and again, know know how to unpack them. I think that's really important, and. Um, I think that uh, it's it's important. I mean, it's important for uh, for Christians to realize, like, well, well, what what does this what does this what does this mean, and and what are what are you actually getting yourself into, um, in terms of when a non-indigenous person adopts an indigenous person or our fosters one, like, what is the, what responsibility is there, and uh, I, I think that in order to do that properly, you you have to know the history of the residential schools you have to know what that was what happened how it went wrong you have to know about the 60s group and uh and what that was and and how that went wrong and in day school um because with the 60s group you have people that are that have grown up they're adults today and completely separated from their culture completely separated from their identity and um uh, and just think about the, the pain that's caused to the individual the difficulty for them to connect to their community and and uh and to their birth families, and and for us to recognize, you know, just just if you're adopting, you you have to know that history, and, and you have to know you have to know that colonialism, like at its at its heart, like it it was meant to erase uh, indigenous people as a national identity. And so, in there's there's a video that that I made um, in 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 response to uh, to Canada Day, and and I was just briefly explaining that. When we look at one of our Canadian values of federalism, so federalism exists because the four founding provinces um, recognized that there was geographical and cultural and linguistic diversity, and, and nobody was willing to accept a unitary state. And so we have federalism, which divides powers so that people can be self-determining and preserve their langu language, culture, and identity. And as new provinces joined, same thing, but federalism preserved their ability to govern themselves. So then when we when when uh, we started signing treaties, when Canada started signing treaties with the First Nation people, you assume the same mechanism or it is the, the same value you're, you're gonna play out that indigenous peoples can preserve their language, their identity and their self-determination because self-determination was really important to those founding provinces. But yet when we're signing treaties, the self-determination aspect was missing. Instead, we have the Indian Act, which is a tool of assimilation, bringing Indigenous peoples in one by one rather than bringing them in as a nation-to-nation -nation relationship. And so, and so it's really important for you to know that history that by adopting, you're not being part of the process of assimilating an individual and erasing their identity. You know, you, you have to be, um, you have to make sure that you're, you're not doing that, you're not participating in that. And the, the burden, of, of, of doing that is that you have to do a ton of research, you know, and, and, and you have to know that history really, really well um, if you're going to step into it. And again, um, 
it's important to have a Christian worldview that is healthy enough that you can that you can navigate how to how to do that with the help of the Holy Spirit. So it's uh yeah, like like I said, it's 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 a lot. There's a huge there's a huge amount of information that you have to take in, and it has to be led by the Holy Spirit. I think yeah, and I know we're we're running shy on time, um, and and maybe we can pick up some of this in our a future a future video. But a couple of things that stand out to me as I think about it, reflect on this from a Christian worldview, and one is um, the idea of assimilation, and 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 often I know with. Uh, there's a, there's a view that says, you know, well, we're all one in Christ, and therefore there's an er erasing of distinction. But, but that, that's not really a misreading of uh, of the New Testament. Uh, their 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 distinction remains. What what is removed is 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 power, status and power. But um, the idea that there's neither male nor female does not, and Jew nor free. Uh, or Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. That what, what's removed there is the status, the status barriers, uh, but but there isn't a removal of, and this is a whole another thing. This isn't a removal of gender. This isn't a removal of uh, of uh, of Jew and Greek. Paul still clearly distinguished between Jewish identity markers and Gentile ones. He, he just said that. These things are not barriers for coming to Christ, but he still recognized these distinctions in this whole image um, that that all the nations will come streaming into the one God. But there was still this um, this beautiful vision of, of distinction that remains. So all to say that that, that was you know that that maintaining what's what's distinct can still be distinct identities can still remain, but but then within that there is still as Christians, we still say, you know, well, there's still this, all these different ways still come together into, into Jesus as one, but, um, but it doesn't mean we all just look homogenous. Um, God, God delights, seems to delight in, in, in the distinctions. Um, but we don't, anyway, we can maybe pick that up in a, in a future, a future yeah. discussion, but the history, right. And that's maybe we, we need to end on this, uh, the idea that, uh, the history matters, um, and and again, it may be not be the case that we caused a problem individually. And my my generation didn't cause this, or you know, my 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 tribe, my distinct uh, group didn't maybe cause this, but we've all inherited it. Um, and even with residential schools, you know, people now, young people now who maybe never attended a residential school because they weren't in effect, but still the effects of that have affected their families for generations and caused some of the unhealthy family dynamics that they inherited and even are the cause behind why someone might be giving someone up for adoption, you know, these kinds of things that you can't just, we can't just say, well, press the reset button and pretend that the last 150 years didn't exist and had no, and didn't have a, a domino effect on the way that things are now. We we have to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Long range, yeah? I, I think that's absolutely key when we're talking about reaching indigenous peoples for Christ, right? When we're sharing indigenous, when we're sharing Christ to indigenous people, sharing the gospel, trying to make it clear, um, one important, thing that we can never forget is that um, this, this is not just an issue of racism. This is not just an issue of um, certain people groups being dis disrespected or, or, or segregated or anything like that. What we're talking about here is reconciliation, which means there is a distinct relationship between Canada and Indigenous peoples that uh, we as Canadian citizens, but especially as believers, need to recognize. And the, this relationship was defined uh, through the many treaties that were established through the Royal Proclamation. Again, um, we, we need to recognize the history in order to respond properly in an informed way as, as believers. And there was one comment that came in to us that said, well, why don't we just look to God and not history? Well, in order for us to properly exemplify the love of Christ, the love of God, to 
the indigenous peoples, we need to have an appreciation of the history, which defines the relationship that still exists to this day. Um, and it informs us of what our responsibilities are as Christians. And so again, to, to over, overly simplify it and to, to say that this is just a, um, you know, uh, we don't need to put in the work or the effort, um, uh, that, that, that is not the right approach and, and that, that it would not be uh, an approach that is reflective of a healthy Christian worldview. I think it's uh it's also important to recognize that what we're trying to do here is uh you know with our with our third way we're looking at like not any of the extremes we're we're being solution focused and what we're doing is is we're we're looking at what are the standards that Christ has for us and how do you apply this here right we're not doing really much new we're just sort of reframing things in the context of what scripture says and in addition because this is not it's not just a theological problem. It's a political problem too. You know, it's, it's for us as Christians um, and Canadians, you know, if you, you put this other hat that we all wear and that we all share together, we're also Canadians at the same time. And as Canadians, we need to understand what are Canadian values and how do our Canadian institutions work and, and what do Canadians believe about what Canadians are. And that's another aspect of this. And so, and so what we're doing is we're just saying like, you know, just be true to what you say on paper, like understand what's in your Canadian constitution, section 35, for example, you know, where it talks about our treaty relationship and, 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 and federalism and all these different things. And so there's a, there's, there's a link in the description to this video to um, a video that I, I made where I unpack some of these things a little bit further, but even just thinking about that, we're just asking people to think about what are the values that we've set for ourselves and how do we apply that in a way that our actions actually match and brings us to a solution that helps everybody. Good. Good. On that, we probably, we probably uh, should close off here, but um, we'll, we'll look forward to uh, future videos and, uh, and future information. But I guess it's just summing up, you know, as we, as we are trying to address the question, what are we, how do we respond? Um, need to be informed. Uh, is part of it. And if we're going to have good relationship, um, we need to understand one another and, uh, and be in relationship with one another. And one of the ways that we can do that is, is conveniently condense um, 94 calls to action, which, which condenses tremendous amounts of listening, really is what it comes down to. Tremendous amounts of listening. And so this is a good way to start. Um, and again, when we don't don't knee jerk to something that's in there and say, oh well, that's silly or that's offensive or something. There there is more that goes into it. But we can we can come back to some of those other things um, in a future episode. And uh, thank you guys for for taking the time here. And uh, we will we will look forward to getting together again. Uh, shortly. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank Thanks again, Jeremy. <laughs>